Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to Spain, and uh, or Iberia, and Al-Andalus achievement run here in the year 1174. It's been a while, um, I apologize for, you know, taking a little break from the series, because I wanted to highlight the uh, Lord of the Rings mod which I will continue to highlight, I think, moving forward as well, especially as that mod continues to be uh, worked upon. And I also apologize for just taking a few days off. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter or you're on the Discord or you checked out the community post here on the channel, you know that we're in the middle of doing a lot of, a lot of home improvement, reconstruction work, windows, floors, and exterior, and that's just taking a lot of time. Plus, even those times where I then have some time to record, I'll be honest, I'm a little tired. <laughs> and other times it's just too loud because there's certain jobs that other people need to do and it's just too loud in that moment. So anyway, I apologize for that. I also want to give a shout out to the latest uh, Hero of the Realm Patreon supporter, John Balshaw. Uh, thank you so much, John. If you want to find out how you can support the channel through Patreon, there's a link down in the description and all of the benefits you get from that. John, of course, uh, as well as everybody else that's come in, will get a character named in series and so on moving forward. Uh, we just need somebody to pop in that's uh, actually worth your name and worthy of it. So, of course, the last uh, go-around here, we... <laughs> Things didn't quite go as hoped, and we are still in the midst of kind of rebuilding things. So here we've got an internal war going on, but as far as Sultan Fadl ibn Abu Bakr is concerned, you know, the adulterer, handsome adulterer, uh, we have a lot of truces going on right now that keep us from really expanding let me unpause here too much we do have a dangerous faction that's kind of amassing a little bit uh nahara right now we can declare war and of course these are all things that we will be pushing castile they have a small alliance uh nothing overly of concern of ours the problem we have right now we need to completely rebuild our military first before we can do anything. I mean, the, the loss of Aquitaine was was pretty rough on us. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you look at it here. Our total soldiers right now, our levies stand at 811. Uh, our men-at-arms are also pretty low. So we need to rebuild all that before we can really think about expanding the realm in, in any real sense. Um... Uh, so the faction that was targeting us has been disbanded. That's kind of nice. And Dynasty Head, we are now Dynasty Head of the Abadids again. All right, so we can pay to... Let's see, bring him out. Okay, that's fine. If we look at our... Uh, that's our culture. Let's take a look here. Open the legacies. So we're still, still working on those. Um... We're actually pretty close. I mean, you look at our renown, it's 1749, cost 1750. So we're really close to ex uh, being able to add another legacy, it looks like. And let's take a look here at the Andalusian culture. We are still the head here. We are very close, unpause now, to getting windmills undone, uh, undone unlocked. Uh, so then we can move on from there. And there you have it. We have the Dynasty Legacy. Take a quick look what we have here for options. So we can go with Warfare. So that's Generational Belligerence. Now, of course, our leader is more into the money-making. But uh, here we will get a Pursuit Efficiency of plus 15%. Retreat Losses minus 15%. And Cassus Belly Cost of minus 20%. Beyond that, in the law, faithful magistrates, so title creation cost goes down 20%. Control growth goes up. I like that. Then we have guile, so long reach, so agent bribe cost goes down by 50%. Hostile scheme success chance plus 10%. But he's not really uh, that type of character. Let's take a quick look at him. So yeah, it's 
it's all about diplomacy and stewardship for him. So uh, because I like to role play these things, we're going to go along those. So guile will not be it. Warfare will not be it. Law could be in there. Blood. Careful breeding to produce the most worthy successor. Noble veins. So congenital traits goes up by 30%. Chance of new good congenital traits goes up by 30%. That's not bad. Erudition. So again, this is more along the learning side of things. Uh, vibrant court. Courtier and guest opinion plus 10. Uh, better guests will be attracted. Guest recruitment cost goes down by 30%. That's good. Glory. Desirable match. Marriage acceptance plus 30. Not worried about that. And kin. Uh, bount uh, bounteous loin, so fertility up by 10%, attraction opinion plus 5. I'm thinking going down this one right here in law, that fits more with uh, the character of our ruler. So that'll be a title creation cost goes down by 20%, control growth up by 0.2 per month. So we're going to unlock that. So now we've got a ways to go before we can unlock the next Dynasty Legacy. But uh, we are on a, a good path here. We do have a few powerful vassals that are expecting council positions. Let's take a look at him. He's her brother-in-law. Uh, everybody here is a vassal. It's looking like, I mean, there's not really much we can do. We don't have enough positions. I mean, he would be an amazing steward, actually. If we think of it. Uh, he's ill, administrator, reclusive, forder. He is Midas touched and, and stewardship of 20. That's actually, actually wouldn't be bad. The question is, is he a powerful vassal? Let's, let's go through this real quick. So that is Abdul Jalil. So let's click on that. If we assign him, he will lose, this guy will lose 20 opinion of us for 10 years. All right, boom. There we go. So that is then done. We'll move forward with that. I think what we can do here is also work on swaying him. Let's look at our other vassals. Rashid Ibn Fadl. He, he would be a fantastic at intrigue. A great spy master. So Rashid the second. Uh, we will he's our brother in law. So we will assign him there. So that's very nice. And then Utman. He would be pretty good at martial or intrigue, but our current martial, Yafar, is even better. So, unfortunately, that guy is just going to have to not like us for a while. Uh, we've got more ransom we need to pay here. And again, this also just has a lot to do with some of the wars that have been fought and get those people free. So, perfect. Uh, we've uh, placated some of the powerful vassals we're dealing with and, um, uh, you know, increased our control. See, is there anything else going on here? We can create a bunch of titles. We can create some duchies. Uh, the Duchy of Valencia. So this would give us 300 in prestige. And the Duchy of Languedoc as well. Hmm. I mean, I do like creating those because the prestige gain is rather nice. It'll help us move towards distinguished and have the ability to declare more wars as we move forward. We have a new stewardship perk we can unlock. We're going to go with the centralization. So development growth and realm capital goes up by plus 0.3 per month. So we'll unlock that. And now we can actually look at, I mean, we're raking in... About 25 gold per month. Uh, that's really nice. We have been burdened with your oppressive laws far too long. No more. We are done paying you taxes. Never a peasant's lot is to serve their lord. All right. We will raise all of our troops. Oh, I still have the rally point up here. Not great. All right. So let's raise all those troops. And our wife is pregnant. Once those are all raised... 
Abdul Jalil replaced us as Dynasty Head. All right, that's fine. All right, let's uh, march on south here. Where are the rebels? They are down there. So let's head down here. That's a bummer. <laughs> remind me. I mean, remind me. Can't really remind me on a YouTube video because this is not Twitch. Uh, I do plan on returning to Twitch and streaming again, especially as, uh, you know, on days where the house construction isn't such a big topic. Um, we've got a new dangerous faction here. Independence faction. Who are you? So that is our powerful vassal. I think maybe we will need to change that uh, with time. But anyway, uh, on normal times, I will be streaming Tuesdays and Fridays and continuing with the really fun uh, ruler designed uh, campaign there on Crusader Kings 3. We'll just have to see when exactly that happens. Also, because as things loosen up, I will be doing day trips and enjoying the nice weather as well here moving forward. So this will be a quick and easy victory. I'll enforce those demands. So be it. All right. So faction has disbanded. We can disband all of our troops. And now let me really quickly head to our capital and put our rally point back in there before our main rally point before i forget i do like having that at home right now okay so we can create a ton of titles and we still we have a low county control that we need to take care of in euclid so we will go to our council we will send our marshal to Euclid. Then uh, I do have to placate him. You know, he wants it. Uh, let's see. I can imprison him. I cannot imprison him. I can try to murder him. I can grant him titles, revoke titles, grant vassals, retract vassal, grant independence. I mean, you are of our parish, so to speak. He has the Abadid Emirate. He's our vassal. He's a rapacious villain. What is the murder success? Seven percent. That's not good. Uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. Question is, if I give him a council position, will that mean he will no longer be angry? Scarred, he's disfigured. Yeah, I'm going to have to do that. Shake your far. I'm really sorry. Going to have to assign. Where is he? Here he is. Why can I not do that? Assign a marshal position. Hmm. Interesting. Leave it in the comments. Uh, maybe it's because he is scheming against us. And that is one of the reasons why we cannot change that. Uh, all right. Let's uh, take a look here in our realm capital. What can we do in Cordoba? Our castle holdings. We can increase some things. Siege works. We cannot upgrade. Let's look here. We could upgrade the manor house to farm estates. So that gives us more tax, more supply limit overall. Development growth goes up as well. Um, our walls and towers, we can upgrade that. So that gives us a higher, a little bit more tax, higher fort level, garrison supply limit, and archer's damage goes up. And then we can go up here to barns and storehouses. That gives us a nice... Uh, bump up in holding taxes, tax in general, and supply limit. We're going to upgrade our walls and towers. And we still have a lot of money. So I think that's the right way to go about that. Uh, if we look at the factions... Okay, we're Dynasty Head again. We've got an Independence faction and a Liberty faction. 
Uh, let's see here. Can I imprison him? He w okay, they'll rise up against us. Hmm. Too weak to send an ultimatum. Too weak to send an ultimatum. We're not quite there yet. I have a son. Balashk. So here... What I will do is, we will name this after one of our newer patrons. So let me have a quick look there. Alright, so Grim327, uh, you are uh, the patron who deserves um, someone named after you next. So we're going to go with, uh, let's just go with Grim. He is grim. Grim. Let's, uh... <laughs> he grows strong, Grim. So there you go. Got you in there. Perfect. So these right now, overall, I'm not too worried about it. So the monthly change, discontent here with the independence faction is pretty low. Uh, and it keeps on dropping. So that's good. That's good. All right. So a question of loyalty. My wife, Sultana Drifa is with child, and I should be overjoyed. However, she has been acting strange, and I cannot shake the feeling that something is wrong. Am I really the father, as she claims? Or has she betrayed her marriage? Um, I must be the father, surely. All right, I'm not going to worry about that right now. So we're going to keep on rebuilding our military. Once this is back to full strength, we will look at the further conquests here internally. How are we sitting with you? There's no way he will change. He will accept vassalage. Hmm. I don't know if we offer him a ward, it's our cousin uh, and the recipient is Emir. Oh, missing village. Lit only by a single candle, my finger pauses on an entry in the ledger. Something's not quite right. So now I'm searching through every record from the Shikno of Cordoba I can find. At last, it is clear as day. It seems as if an entire village has gone missing from the taxation records. The tax collector in Cordoba must investigate. I shall travel to the village personally. They'll just go missing all the time? No. Uh, the tax collector will take a closer look. I think that is definitely what should happen. A missing village continues. Yaya, the tax collector in Shechtum of Cordoba, went to great lengths to press upon me how important it was that I come to see the missing village for myself. Following days of travel, I finally ride into the village. It seems like any other dirt patch of a settlement. Yaya is nevertheless insistent, my liege, let me just show you this place, I beg of you. This is my home. Very well, show me around. As Yaya shows me around the village, all I see are gaunt cows, chickens digging in the dirt, and peasants returning from the fields with light burdens. When I comment on it, he makes his point. These people can barely feed their livestock. If I demand more from them, they would starve. I guess I could grant a tax lien. Uh, even under the circumstances, they must pay. Uh, this is what you wanted to show me? Treason. Um, it's compassionate and generous. So, a tax lien for sure. Uh, definitely, definitely. Greetings, brother. I hereby invite you to a feast at my court. Yes, I, it will be my pleasure. A warm welcome. Every guest is gathered in the great hall, and our gracious host, Sheikh Abad, has welcomed us all to the feast. I look forward to this. As one plate of food is replaced by the next, my steward, Emir Adfuns, goes on and on about tax levels. And that was how we salvaged that mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you, my lord? No, no, no. Please, please go on. All right, back to the missing village situation. The taxes levied on the peasants of my realm can at times be so harsh that even life is stifled. Easing it can often be the path to ever greater prosperity for a patient sultan. I have learned so much, so we gain a stewardship lifestyle perk. 
All right, but back to the feast. The witness. As I stumble outside to relieve myself, I hear shouting around the corner. As I turn, as I turn it, I see my brother Sheikh Jiat sneer as he sinks his blade into the face of the covering uh, Sheikh Amunya. Whatever sound I made must have been enough for Jed turns me surprised on his face. What have you done? Ooh, that is intrigue indeed. All right, so here we will go with popular figure figurehead. So popular opinion goes up by 50. We'll see what now happens at this really intriguing feast. All right, so nothing more has happened at the feast. Uh, Troop-wise, we're pretty close to everything. So let's take a look at the Hudids again. See, they are aligned with eh, their own internal and an external vassal. Uh, what can we do here as far as war declarations? Let's take a look. So we can conquer a county. We can take his claims, his claims, his claims, which are non-existent, and his claims. Um, Shiktums, the Hudid Emirate... Okay, so Muhammad Abadid gains the following. Uh, increases his opinion, so... Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. There's nothing really much there to do. Now let's take a look at these guys here. Alright, declaring a war here for our claims. That's a pretty straightforward thing to do. Uh, they have no allies. Take a look here. At Castile, actually. Uh, declare a war on them. Let's see, he has a claim there. Yeah, same claim. He's got a claim up there. We can conquer a county. We can do a holy war for a duchy. And then we have to pick the right duchy. We can invade the kingdom. Change the objective to the kingdom of Navarra. The kingdom of Galicia. Cost too much. If we just do a duchy, the Skaya, Cantabria, or the Duchy of Galicia, that's the one that I think would make the most sense. Now let's look at Galicia themselves. They are allied with France. So, yeah, we're not going to worry about them. But I think taking out Navarra uh, is a logical step. That's the only thing we need to take so what i'm going to do is we're going to move our rally point real quick move the rally points over here and go to them and we will declare a war for our claims declare that war raise all of our armies and uh, yeah i think we're going to roll these guys we should roll them pretty swiftly and quickly oh the feast what a feast! I will remember the day spent, and farewell, brother, and we lose stress. Fantastic. All right. So now, these guys will move in here. These guys will move in here. And these guys will move in there as well. So we have three armies converging upon, and I have a daughter, Noor. Very nice. All right, so this will be over here in a moment. As we engage the enemy in mountainous terrain. And the Duke of Navarra is the leader himself. Alright, so we win that battle pretty easily. Ew, there we go. He won't go in there. How are we looking here? We've got four months left on this siege. Oh, he's still gathering his troops. That's the problem here. So once all of his troops are gathered, then they will move in there as well. All right, we have won the Siege of Navarra, and now we can enforce the demands. And Navarra is ours. Don't have to worry about the domain limit. We're very well set there. And we can then look in here. I'll probably need to increase our control there. We have vassals who want positions. Again, can I assign? I cannot assign him. Interesting. All right, what else do we have here? He wants a position. He would be a good steward, but we already have a good steward. So, fortunately, he's just not going to 
be that. Uh, all right, so we need a new alliance. Or renegotiate that. Then we've got county control that needs to be upgraded in Tudela. Increase control there. We have a ransom to pay. And then we have prisoners ourselves that we can ransom out for some money. I'll do that here real quick. Let's see. Resenda de Lusignon. Interesting. A Lusignon. Uh, get rid of him. Got to wait for all this to go through. And we have a little sun lube. So here we will also add one of our recent Patreon supporters. And it will be Andy. And we will call him Andy. May you grow strong and wise, Andy. Perfect. We'll keep on going through here and get a little bit of cash for these prisoners. Um, hmm. Is he any good at anything? Good at Marshall. So what we'll do here, we'll just recruit him to our court. He's got a decent prowess. I mean, he could be... He could be a knight if need be. Very nice. So Navarra is now part of ours. And now we can turn our attention to Castile. Uh, let's see. They are allied with Coimbra. So that's internal. And we definitely have overwhelming forces to destroy them. So what I think we'll do. I kind of want this right here. Because it just looks nicer. And then we can isolate Castile further. As well as Galicia. Let's just look through here. That is Lugo. Astorga. What do we have up here? Odeño. Ferrol. A Coruña. Monterey. Limia. Okay. I was just looking to see if... No, Santiago's over here. Santiago de Compostela would be all the way over here. So I'm not going to worry about that. You know, that's a holy site. Because that, I still believe, kind of triggered that crusade we dealt with earlier in the series. So I think going after Castile here, and I'll set... What I'll do is I'll actually set our rally point up here. And that way we can send some troops in here and some troops over there to deal with them. So let's uh, change our rally point. And I will move it up here to Pravia. But I still want to wait until all of our levies are back at full strength and full power. Once they've gotten to that point, I think it'll be time to then look at least want to top 8,000. And then we will declare war on Castile. And take what is rightfully ours and rebuild at least and take all of all of Iberia bit by bit. Current situation, uh, we can create a lot of titles. Don't really want to create kingdom titles. I mean, how much do they even cost? I know if I create certain titles, how much does, it, does this cost? It would cost 400 gold. You know, I wouldn't mind getting to the point where we can just declare an empire. Found a new empire would cost a lot of money. So we are not there yet. That's okay. Uh, he has not been swayed, but he still does like us. We've now hit 8,000, and I think... We can look at declaring war on Castile here. And we will declare a war. We will do a hmm, 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 holy war for a duchy. For the duchy of Galicia. We will confirm that. We've got a pretty decent army. But we are more powerful. So we will declare the war. And raise all of our armies. And we will call our one ally in as well. Looks like they have a sizable force there. We'll bring our sizable force 
together. And we will look at... Oh, do we bother attacking them or just go behind and besiege the capital? I think we'll go that route and take A Coruña and go behind their back and siege that down and then engage the enemy as things progress. The good thing is if they attack us now here, we would get the defensive bonus. I could also still call in or hire mercenaries because we've got plenty of money. But that's not really what I'd like to do. I'd like to just win this outright. Here come our allies from North Africa. A new uh, council position. So we need a new marshal. We assign the man uh, that was demanding it. And we have a new lifestyle perk. And the domain limit will be increased here because we do divided attention. We'll unlock that. Perfect. And we will win this siege here shortly. And once we do, if we can get there before they attack... They'll ha they have got more, but if our ally would please come in and help, that would be ha that would be nice. Will he get there in time? He won't. We're gonna lose this battle, damn it. Uh, exercise mediation. Yeah, yeah, try to make sense. Fine, I don't care about that. We have gained prestige, and we're gonna lose this battle because our allies didn't show up in time, even though we had superior forces. Not happy about that. We are not doing well at war here. That's to say the least. Um, you're no longer head of the dynasty. And that makes me very unhappy. Pravia is under siege. Let's take a look at this here real quick. They have 9,000 soldiers. Levies, they gained eight. Oh, they have the, they've got Holy Order, Knights. They grew a lot. This was not the force when it started. I mean, this was not the force we faced when we declared war. Well, we're going to finish up this war one way or another ne uh, next time. And uh, this it's kind of a bummer. I don't quite know where those guys came in. Probably triggered through the Holy War, so a Holy Order came in. But they were about half that size in military when we declared this war. Um, which at the time was the right thing to do at the right time. But unfortunately, now things have changed. But we have the money. We can bring in mercenaries. Let's change the rally point down here. Uh, our military here needs a new commander. So I'll put him in charge. And mercenaries. Let's see, what will we add? So we've got light footmen and pikemen. And then we have armored horsemen with them. This is a very large force here. The, they are light footmen, caballeros, and pikemen. 578, that's a lot of money. We're going to hire them. Uh, I thought our rally point had changed. Apparently it had not. So we're going to get out of dodge with them real quick. And change our rally point. To... All the way down here. So rally point, change that down here, which I thought I had done. So these guys are getting out of there. Head them down this way. They drew some of those forces off, so that actually broke the siege. And I need to unpause, of course. I should be able to outrun them. Then we'll bring these forces together and ideally turn around. So it's become Dynasty Head again. It's just a constant back and forth. But it drew them away. And get these forces together here. And what I will do then is hit pause. And we will combine those forces. 
and we will get out of dodge here. We'll head south. And I think that will then have to suffice until the next episode as they keep on rushing south. I have no other allies we can call in, but I'm not too concerned about that. I will hit pause now. So they have 9,500. We have 8,600. So yeah, we're going to just lead them on a bit of a merry chase. And ideally rebuild our troop sizes here with time and come at them and hopefully in the next episode actually win this war. So let me know in the comments if you know why all of a sudden they doubled their force size. Again, I'm assuming it's because of Holy War and then a Holy Order came in. But if I'm incorrect, I'm sure you will let me know. So until next time, I'm Realm Builder Guy. Don't forget to hit that like button. I'll talk to you soon.